In these slides, we present our recent report on the quantitative susceptibility mapping reconstruction challenge which took place in 2016. You can find more details on the challenge as well as data and MATLAB code by following the link qsm2016.com. First, I want to give some background on how the challenge came to be. In the first QSM workshop in 2011, the main argument was on how to judge the reconstructed susceptibility maps. Should we look at visual quality or quantitative accuracy? In the following workshop in 2013, we talk about standardization so that we could better answer these questions. A couple of years later, an email exchange between Marcus Bart and Ferdinand Schweizer led to the beginnings of such a reconstruction challenge. At ISMM 2016, we actually announced the challenge, and several months later, we announced the results in the fourth QSM workshop that took place in Graz, Austria. Early concepts for QSM reconstruction date back to a decade ago, and more refined methods have been continuously developed to allow reconstruction from single-head orientation in a clinical setup with low reconstruction artifacts. This allowed QSM to attract a high number of researchers. We currently have 300 members in the EMTP study group, and QSM is utilizing studies of neurological disorders and is also being used outside of the brain. And if we do a simple PubMed search with QSM, we see that there are more than 300 papers on this topic. In this challenge, we had a couple of aims. First, we wanted to test the ability of various QSM techniques to faithfully recover the underlying susceptibility map from noisy phase data that was acquired in vivo. We also wanted to provide a common ground truth dataset that would help us benchmark not only existing techniques, but also the ones that will be developed in the future. Finally, we wanted to disseminate the results and lessons learned in this challenge in a participant-driven paper and also provide a common benchmark dataset that can be downloaded from the following link. First, take a look at how we actually designed this reconstruction challenge. One question is whether we should use a numerical phantom or an in vivo dataset. A problem with numerical data is that they are often limited to piecewise constant models, which is very beneficial for prior based techniques. So, it is pretty difficult to design a realistic phantom, and the results obtained on such data may not have practical relevance, so we decided to proceed with in vivo data. There are quite a few moving parts when designing such a challenge with in vivo data. The input phase data depends on acquisition parameters and the specific algorithms utilized during the processing. To level the playing ground, we actually decided to provide the input phase to the contestants or selves. Each reconstruction technique has certain parameters that affect its performance. To ensure that each algorithm performs as good as it possibly can, we provided the ground root susceptibility map to the contestants. This way, each group could fine-tune their parameters to allow for a fair comparison. We also provided source code that computes multiple error metrics to create a multidimensional performance vector. As ground root, we decided to use the chi 3 tree, which is one of the diagonal elements of the susceptibility tensor solution. With this, we aim to mitigate orientation dependence and anisotropy effects. But I will come back to this point later. In terms of data acquisition, we provided single orientation GRE phase data, chi 3 tree to serve as ground root, Cosmos solution, as well as NPRH and GRE magnitude to serve as structural priors if needed. We also provided MATLAB code to compute TKD and closed form L2 reconstructions for benchmarking and functions to evaluate performance metrics. For this dataset, a healthy female was scanned at a 3 tree system using wave query acquisition, and 12 orientations were sampled at about 1.1 mm isotropic resolution. We used long echo time to provide high phase contrast and each head orientation took about 90 seconds at 15 volt acceleration. We used Romer coil combination for optimal SNR in the combined complex signal, and further details can be found in the referenced publication. Let's take a look at the challenge dataset. We provide the GRE magnitude data to serve as structural prior. We also made an MPH contrast available if needed. Raw phase data after brain masking was also available. This made it possible for single-stack algorithms to be included in the reconstruction challenge. This is what the unwrapped phase data looked like. After LBB background filtering, we obtained this foreground phase information. You might notice the central darkening effect due to B1 plus contributions. 
To mitigate this, we employed polynomial fitting and obtained this final tissue phase data, which was made available to the users. Finally, we also made the entire phase processing pipeline available in this location, which might help inform future QSM applications. For Copnitlis, we provided the Cosmos solution from 12 head orientation. But for Grand Root Reference QSM, we actually employed the Chi 3.3 element of the STI solution. And finally, we released the tissue phase data from all 12 head orientations in case they are helpful in future studies. The evaluator reconstructions, susceptibility maps calculated from single orientation data, were tested against the gold standard CHI 3.3 using the following metrics root mean squared error, high frequency error norm, as well as structural similarity index. We also looked at quantitative accuracy in major deep gray matter nuclei and white matter regions of interest. We were lucky to have 27 contributions from 13 groups around the globe. The winner in the RMSE category was the UBC group. In their method, they divided the case space of phase data into ill-conditioned and well-conditioned regions, and then they estimate the ill-conditioned data using compressed sensing. John Alpine's group was the winner in the HVAN category. They also employed compressed sensing reconstruction to get an initial susceptibility map, from which they could derive structural priors that were used in dipole inversion. This group was also the winner in the SSIM category. And finally, the winner in the ROI accuracy was the contribution from Southern Medical University. This technique employed total variation regularization, where different regularization parameters were selected for smooth and non-smooth regions. We thought that most of the winners suffered from oversmoothing, and the reconstructed maps were relatively blurred. With help from my colleague Christian Lankamer, we tried to look into this in more detail. Using the GRASS TGV technique, we started increasing the regularization parameter. Already at a point where the images look too smooth, we obtained the best SSIM and ROI accuracy metrics. But to get even better RMSE and HVAN scores, we had to further increase this parameter, which led to an over-the-regularized solution. Clearly, these metrics favored over-smooth solutions. We think that this could be because some regions suffer from severe dipole artifacts, which might be contributing a lot to the final error metric. So we might have ended up cranking up the regularization to mitigate these, which also led to all regularized solutions. We might need to look into error maps to better understand this effect. With our simple forward model, we neglected some of the contributions that might be better explained by including chemical exchange and Lorentz tensor models. Finding error metrics that better reflect the visual quality is another open question in our field. We also neglected some cross terms in our ground rule susceptibility maps, and I would like to talk about this next. According to the STI model, the relation between the observed phase data and the susceptibility tensor is captured by this equation. This can be largely simplified if you look at the transverse acquisition plane. This simpler equation is nothing but our scalar forward model, where chi 3.3 fully explains the acquired phase data. So perhaps this could serve as a ground root at the transverse head orientation. But there are actually a couple of more cross terms that contribute to the observed phase. Although we neglected these in our simple model, the cross terms don't seem to be negligible when compared to the chi 3.3 solution. So this indicates that chi 3.3 may not be the best possible ground root. One of our winners, Christian Kames, helped us get a better understanding of this issue. What he did was to start from Cosmos and chi 3.3 solutions and forward simulate the phase data corresponding to this reference map. We saw that Cosmos provided a more consistent ground route compared to the STI solution. In this figure, he has plotted the forward errors incurred by the two reference maps, where Cosmos is seen to yield lower differences. Despite these setbacks, we were happy to see that the challenge data as well as the error metrics are being utilized to develop the next generation of QSM algorithms, such as these recently proposed machine learning methods. Going forward, we would like to capitalize on this experience and the lessons learned to develop a second reconstruction challenge. We are considering two concepts around which we could build the next challenge. We could start from realistic and complex numerical models to help quantify numerical accuracy. We have already collected some high-quality tissue parameter data, which has allowed us to build a comprehensive simulator. 
Secondly, we could focus on clinical utility of susceptibility maps and see which algorithm provides the most relevant and robust information in difficult clinical cases. We will talk more on this in the upcoming EMTP study group meeting in ISMRAM 2018 and we look forward to your feedback. Thank you for your attention.